So I understand uh, we have something to discuss about uh, Can Force One and it's uh, a little resting period it had at Delhi Airport. Uh, was that sabotage? No, it was not. And and you know th th when I actually I received a question on it this morning and it was the first time I'd ever heard that suggested. But I went back and have and have confirmed uh, with our people that 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 uh, plane was very much uh, in in our possession through, throughout its, its time in India. And it has been very clearly and unequivocally determined that it was a mechanical problem uh, that required repair so that we could be safe in departure. It was an unfortunate uh, delay, but, but we're also addressing that delay through the acquisition of, of, of new aircraft that, that hopefully will prevent that type of thing from reoccurring in the, in the future. Just two precision points. I believe it had been described as a regulatory problem that the plane could fly, but it was something to do with the aircraft regulations. That were there, there were some regulatory issues, and but it, but it was primarily a, a, a mechanical issue. There is no suggestion, and I, and I want to be very clear, that there is absolutely no uh, concern that, that this could have in any, been, in any way have been um, uh, as a result of any form of interference. Um, it, it was uh, of an issue with the plane, and that issue was resolved. And finally, it's my belief that the RCMP does keep possession through their air marshal service of the aircraft in flight and on the tarmac at all times. That, yeah, am I correct my, my understanding is, is that they were doing their job. Um, the supervision was there. There was a mechanical issue, a regulatory mechanical issue that was detected, um, and it was it, and the decision was made in order to maintain the safety of everybody involved to, to resolve that before the, the plane took off. And finally, the new 330 Husky, uh, Can Force One, but called number two, should be uh, in service in the coming weeks. Yeah, we've, we've actually taken possession of, of the plane, but there's some important work that needs to be done to ensure it's 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 refurbished for the purpose for which it is now intended. That work was is proceeding uh, apace. Um, and I, I think, unfortunately, we we had some evidence of the need to replace those those aircraft. That job's been done now, and we're moving forward. Thank Thanks you so much. Good to see you. Got to ask you about Pulse. Pulse crops, any concern? Well, there's a concern, sure there's a I concern. Mean, is there a concern with what's Heavy going on? concern. Yeah. Uh, by Terra is not taking any more orders in our province as of yesterday. They're just going to wait it out and see what's going to happen. So yes, uh, we do a big trade with India on Pulse, chickpeas. Everyone's kind of watching right now. Yeah, is it, uh, I mean, it, I, things aren't back to where, where they were from the last go around, right? Uh, uh, pretty pretty close, bit. pretty close. Yeah. I mean, where the pulse crops come in our province, we did have some drought this year. Uh, but the concern, I think, today, if you don't mind me saying in Saskatchewan caucus, because we did talk about it, is Viterra not taking any more orders for at least two weeks. So. We'll see if it plays out. But that was the first red flag that we got, uh, that Viterra has decided just to hold off on orders now for the next two weeks. And my recollection is Pulse is the biggest thing. That huge, yeah, huge, I mean, 40%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 40% of our it's, trade in Saskatchewan. There, it is part of a crop rotation, so yeah. you know, next season. But Yeah, you're yeah. right. But, but, but still, you've got huge. Pulse in the hoppers. So you want it's our biggest hoppers. trading partner, India, right now, Saskatchewan. and. Uh, so yes, it's a red flag for the provincial government and it's also a red flag for the 14 MPs representing our province. Thank you for stopping. There. Good, thanks. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Cody Blois. I'm the Member of Parliament for King's Hants and the proud chair of the Atlantic Liberal Caucus. And as you can see, I'm joined today uh, by all my caucus colleagues here in the Atlantic. And we want to talk a little bit about something that we saw yesterday in the House of Commons that is concerning for us. And of course, that is Project um, Bill C-49. And I want uh, journalists and certainly Canadians at home to understand what this piece of legislation means, uh, not only for Canada, but particularly for Atlantic Canada. This is to amend the Atlantic Accords. And the Atlantic Accords were established between Newfoundland and Labrador and the Government of Canada and the Government of Nova Scotia and the Government of Canada to offshore and regulate um, the offshore oil and gas industry. The government introduced the legislation yesterday as a way to help advance the offshore um, wind industry. Huge renewable opportunity here in Canada, in Atlantic Canada. We had the German Chancellor who was in Newfoundland and Labrador last summer. Uh, we as a caucus figured that this would be a piece of legislation that would be relatively straightforward and we would have support of all parties in the House because it matters for climate change, it matters for good jobs in this country, and it sure matters for us in Atlantic Canada. After 10 speakers from the Conservative Party, including the shadow minister, uh, the Conservatives have made very clear that they are not in support of this bill. 
I want to be very clear, and I'm speaking on behalf of my Atlantic colleagues this afternoon, we see this as an attack on Atlantic Canada. This is a bill that is supported by the governments of Nova Scotia, the governments of Newfoundland and Labrador, Premier Houston, Premier Fury, the clean energy industry, Indigenous communities, and I would say in general Atlantic Canadians writ large want to see us move on this piece of legislation because it enables a really important sector, a sector that we think globally is going to represent almost a trillion dollars of investment that we can bring to Canada. But the race is real, and the longer that this bill sits before the House of Commons, and the fact that we have a Conservative Party that is against it, is just a continuing trend. And we had a press conference this morning, but we wanted to join you here with the national media pool to say a couple things. This is a continuing trend. MP Sean Casey actually mentioned it this morning in our caucus. When Stephen Harper was in government, the Prince Edward Island government and the New Brunswick government were looking for a third line to establish power links between those provinces. Stephen Harper said no. We'll all remember our good friend Bill Casey, who stood up for constituents on the Atlantic Accords. He was thrown out by the Conservative Party. This is a continuous trend where the Conservative Party of Canada does not understand the needs of Atlantic Canada. I had to listen to Ontario Conservative MPs yesterday suggest that they know what's best for this region. And we are calling on the Conservative Party of Canada very clearly today to support Bill C-49. If you don't agree with everything, fine. Get it to committee, work with us to get this to the next stage because it matters for our region. Just très rapidement en français. Nous avons plusieurs des opportunités au sens de le secteur renouvelable, particulièrement le secteur éolien en mer en Canada Atlantique. Et hier, le gouvernement de Canada a déposé un projet de loi 49, un projet de loi très très crucial pour notre région de Canada Atlantique. Uh, C'est un projet de loi qui est soutenu par le gouvernement de Nouvelle-Écosse, par le gouvernement de Terre-Neuve, Premier ministre Houston, Premier ministre Fury, toutes les parties prenantes en l'industrie de l'énergie propre, mais incroyable, mais le, le Parti conservateur a signalé qu'ils sont contre ce projet de loi. Et c'est exactement uh, uh, très mauvais parce que notre caucus, notre région a besoin de cette législation. Donc aujourd'hui, très simple, au nom de caucus d'Atlantique, uh, nous demandons au Parti conservateur d'appuyer le projet de loi C-49, d'appuyer notre région, nos intérêts, parce que c'est très important pour notre région et uh, uh, nous sommes disponibles pour la question, et moi, dans ma position de président de Caucus de Atlantic, ou mes collègues, ou mes ministres. Thank you. Great, thank you. What, what's on your mind? Well, the Atlantic Liberal Caucus uh, made some statements today about C-49, which we think, I think, are a little ironic. Uh, they are calling on us to do certain actions as Conservatives. The Liberals MPs in Atlantic Canada have been uh, quite shy, actually, about talking about the things that they've done this year, in particular in Atlantic Canada since July 1st, to, to harm Atlantic Canadians and the cost of living with the imposition of the two uh, carbon taxes July 1st, which sent gas up 20 cents a litre in the first week of July, and it's making it very difficult for everyone. It's forced the cost of living up to now inflation at 4%. So uh, I guess my ask of the Liberal MPs and the Liberal Caucus in Atlantic Canada is they actually come out in defense of the people they represent and actually ask for the carbon tax to be removed on all of the goods and services that it's applied to in Atlantic Canada, which is making it difficult for people to heat and eat. What, I mean, you're, you're in Greater Lunenburg, I assume. What, what's happened to your heating bill? My heating bill? Well, the oil tanks are just about to be filled up and I've, I have to heat with oil. We don't have much choice in uh, Nova Scotia, as you know. It's oil that comes from Saudi Arabia and the oil bills are going up about 20%, already expensive. So depending on how much oil you burn a, a year, three, $4,000 a winter, a 20% increase in the cost of home heating this winter caused by uh, Justin Trudeau's carbon tax is uh, it makes it incredibly difficult not only for people to heat their homes but even to afford to pay their rent or mortgages or buy food. And so what's disappointing is that Liberal caucus members in Atlanta, Canada aren't actively publicly pushing for their government to remove that carbon tax that has become so 
harmful to Atlantic Canadians. What about an increase in the carbon tax rebate that uh, many of us received? Well, I thought the carbon tax was neutral in terms of it, so I'd have to borrow some more money, I guess. But but uh, the the cure for this is not spending more money. The cure for this is getting rid of the cause of the problem. And the cause of the problem is the carbon tax, which is putting the price of every single good that we buy in Atlantic Canada up and, and making everything way more difficult. Food costs have gone up compounded 20% this year. That's enormous and Liberals seem to be oblivious to the fact that they are the cause of it. So again, we call on Liberal Atlantic MPs to speak for their constituents, not to speak for Justin Trudeau, to speak for their constituents and ax the carbon tax. We're stopping. Good Thank to see you. you. All right. What do you think of the march today in Ottawa and all over the country? Est-ce que est-ce que c'est vous trouvez ça normal de manifester contre les chirurgies de transgenre? Ben moi, je dirais qu'au Canada, on vit dans un pays où, généralement, là, on respecte les droits et les libertés de chacun et de chacune. Ça a toujours été comme ça. Euh, je pense que la plupart des Canadiens veulent que ça reste comme ça. On sait qu'au sud de la frontière, ils ont des débats qui, malheureusement, opposent certaines personnes à d'autres personnes. Je ne pense pas qu'on veuille importer ça ici au pays. Est-ce qu'on est en train de polariser le, ce, ce débat-là actuellement avec euh, les positions des conservateurs, les positions aussi du Parti populaire au Canada? Bien, la politique de la polarisation est la politique la plus facile à faire. C'est très simple de diviser les gens, de les mettre en opposition les uns avec les autres, de mettre certaines formes d'identité, de, de personnalité en contraste et en opposition avec d'autres. Ce n'est pas une politique que moi j'aime personnellement. Ce n'est pas la politique non plus que M. Trudeau aime faire. Merci. Quand vous regardez la manifestation actuellement, où est-ce qu'on se positionne? Est-ce qu'on est trop polarisé dans ce débat sur les chirurgies euh, de transgenre? Euh, c'est difficile d'être une humain. La vie est tellement difficile, particulièrement maintenant. Et je comprends bien qu'il y a beaucoup de personnes qui ont peur pour l'avenir. Et, euh, et c'est facile de jouer avec ça. Mais euh, l'habilité pour quelqu'un de continuer comme, euh, comme un humain, dans leur direction, leur choix, ça, c'est essentiel pour une démocratie. C est, c est, ça, c'est essentiel pour nous. Et ce n'est pas acceptable pour moi d'essayer de, euh, de, de d'imposer une position, un point de vue dans l'autre personne. Et euh, c'est pour moi, c'est presque le même débat pendant le, le mariage gay. Euh, à ce moment-là, il y avait beaucoup de personnes qui étaient tellement fâchées, qui ont dit que le monde... Euh, et fini, et c'est une situation terrible et pas acceptable. Mais aujourd'hui, on, on voit que ce n'est pas le cas par de tout. Euh, c'est un temps difficile dans le monde, mais de jouer avec le peur, ce n'est pas acceptable, ça. Donc, tu as l'impression qu'on joue avec la terre, qu'on joue sur le, le, le fait que ce sont des enfants qui pourraient éventuellement euh, avoir accès à ces chirurgies-là? J'espère éventuellement que chaque enfant, euh, partout au pays, éventuellement, j'espère partout au monde, peut devenir exactement ce que la personne euh, euh, veut être. Euh, et ça, c'est le type de, de monde que je veux. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Merci, bonne journée. Bonne journée, vous.